Hey guys, my name is Jason with Mount Baker Mining and Metals, and today we're in Chami, Moritania. When we arrived in Chami, we saw hundreds of these Chilean or cone mills, as you can see here. And the miners would hand crush the rock down to about two inch minus and dump 10 sacks of ore into the bottom of these Chilean mills and add a huge amount of mercury, a couple kilograms of mercury to the bottom of the trough. And these big wheels go around and it's called whole ore amalgamation when they use mercury with the raw ore and they just crush it all together and squish the mercury and ore together and as the gold is liberated the mercury amalgamates with the gold and here you can see some of the sacks they use and the size of the rock they feed into these mills And here's a tub of the concentrates we're going to take over and he's going to show us how he squeezes the mercury out and gets his gold out of the concentrates from the cone mills. These cone mills hold about 10 sacks of ore and depending on the hardness they can run the cone mills for anywhere between 8 and 24 hours for 10 sacks and each sack weighs 50 kilograms so they can only process about half to one ton per day. Yeah. Well, it's coming from yeah. from the drum, yeah? yeah? The mercury is inside. Daniel, you want to give us a, bit, a 10 second description of what we're looking at here? Uh, sure. You know, the, this, uh, these these uh, cone mills are processing the rock, which they're adding mercury directly to, and that mercury, this is the material coming out of the cone mills after, you know, eight or 24 hour process. So you can see the mercury in it if you look closely. You can see the, the silver balls of mercury. That's got gold in it. All of the mercury you can oh, see yeah. yep. has got gold in it. And so then they'll wash it and they'll get the mercury and then they'll press the mercury through. Um, they'll filter it in order to recover the gold. And ask for what? Yeah, we're just about to. Yeah, we're just about to. Yeah, we're just about to. 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 You guys have to prepare to pay for it. Oh, you guys have to pay for it. Oh, wow. Wow. It's just mercury all over the place. Two, two, uh. Hello? I'm not going to. See the way that it's all falling together? Yeah. Look so at how much it's flowered. Yeah, you can do it. Look at the iron piece there. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Big, big gold pieces, or no, maybe not. The pieces of gold are the of the gold. Yeah, the pieces of gold are the pieces of gold. Yeah, the 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 there's ways to reduce the flower in there. You can use chemicals. Oh, wow. I live in So here's the, this is the gold sponge from what, about half of their concentrates? I would say there's probably more in the next one. It's okay, yeah. And they burned it, they burned this off in the, in the little charcoal burner. And then here's their gold sponge. So now he's taking uh, the gold sponge and he's going to melt it down into a, a little gold button. And it looks like map gas. He's using map gas. I'll try and hold it still here. And 
I think it's just a rock. He's just using a rock as a kind of a makeshift car here. He's got a little bottle here. I, I don't know if it's uh, nitric or not. He might he might add nitric to it, but yeah. It's got quite a silver color to it. Yeah. Is this his concentrate bottle or what? Uh, here we go. So he's taking a little of this fluid. I believe it's nitric acid. Nitric? Uh, I see. I see. So we have the nugget? Got here on his pant leg? I see. I think he's going to add the button to the nitric to help dissolve any copper or silver, I, I think. Yeah, look at that. It turned it turned yellow. Immediately. Wow. That is so the silver is gone or less. Silver isn't there it is. Yeah, yeah. Take it. boom. Nice. Yeah, merci. Yeah, merci. Yeah, merci. Très bien. Merci. Merci. Mais, uh, this is one of Almino set to grab. Mm. Set, eh? I think it's like seven grams. Wow. No, 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 I think it's like five. Yeah, less. C'est combien? C'est combien grams? Allez, you know, cinq grams. Cinq? 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 Oh, here comes another, uh, another batch. Here's another sponge, and he's, he's going to do this process again. One batch. This is one batch. No, no. So after seeing how the Chilean mills were working, I wanted to test the tailings that were coming out of the Chilean mills. So I went over and I tried to convince this guy to give me a shovel full of tailings out of the tailings trough. And I'm going to pan it down and see if we can recover any gold or mercury that was lost by the mills. He asked you if you want to job with him. A job? <laughs> he, he, he finds that you, that you pan very well. I pan well? Yes. <laughs> It's, it's just, it's really fine. It's all a uniform size. Um, what we're doing here is we're, we've taken some tailings from the, uh, the cone mills or the Chilean mills, and uh, I'm testing to see if there's any gold or mercury left over. And uh, the way these, these cone mills work is the, the wheels go around and then anything that gets crushed in the water and flows out is tailings. And after between eight and 24 hours, they uh, they stop the mill and they collect what's in the bottom and that's where the gold and the mercury should stay. Uh, but we will we'll pan and see if there's any mercury that gets out into the into the tailings. Great. Let's give this a swirl here. I've panned down just one pan of tailings. Okay. Let me take just a little bit. You can see the mercury. Oh wow! Well, yeah. So see, the, here's the, this is all mercury that uh, escaped from the mill and this was just one pan of tailings. So in one pan of tailings there's a significant amount of mercury left in the, in, in the system even after they're, they're done with it. And, and some of this mercury may have gold amalgamated with it, so if they're losing mercury they're, they're surely losing gold as well. By taking the waste from the current mining, you can actually clean it up and recover a lot more value as shown here by burning off the mercury that you saw in the pan. This is the amount of gold they lost from one pan of tailings. This is our quote unquote high grade sample. We're gonna let it run for 45 minutes in here again, then we'll open the gate and down on the shaker table. This thing's a little bit problematic to get loaded. When we load it, when it's not running, it tends to not be able to turn the wheels over the material. It takes a little bit of work. So I think in the future we're going to turn it on and then shovel in 
as it's running so we don't have a mountain it's got to try and climb over. But this is going to be our duplicate from the run we did yesterday. The guys are finishing up, crushing the rest of the stuff through the hammer mill. And we'll have two runs on the shaker table with cons for direct smelting. And we have two bags over here, two samples, one and two for whole ore amalgamation back at Chami to test the recovery of the way the miners do it now versus the new system with direct smelting. Now here we're looking at the table. We're doing our final cleanup here. And a lot of this is steel. But once you get down over here, the shaker table is doing its job. And a lot of this here is actually yellow gold. Hard to tell on the camera probably. But it's all working its way right down into the number one. There's some yellow. A nice, nice piece of gold. A couple nice pieces coming. So that's good news. A little bit richer sample here. This is our second cleanup here. And we have our gold line coming. It's better than the first one, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's better. It's still not a whole bunch of gold, but it's better than what we had. So we'll go with it. Get it all down into the number one. The, all the gray there is steel from the cone mill. So we, we'll get that out of there, and um, I think our plan is to direct smelt this as well. That'll double up our double up our direct smelting test. So more gold. I think we can maybe pan it out. We'll take a look. So here's the results from our second test through the cone mill onto the shaker table. A significant amount more gold than what we had yesterday, which is good. And we're going to save this out for direct smelting, our second direct smelting test, which I think we're going to start here this afternoon if we have time. All right, we're just starting our direct smelting test. This is going to be kind of a, a test of the process. We have 100 grams of concentrates, but they don't have much gold in them. Again, we're just going to test the recipe here. We have 100 grams of silica and 300 grams. Yeah. Of um, soda ash. That's right, soda ash. Okay. Yeah, sodium carbonate. And this is just to prove that we won't get a matte layer. We want to test this out before we throw all our gold rich cons in there and screw it up. So we will get this nice and hot. Nice silica crucible. Yeah, good. A nice looking crucible. And once it's up to temperature, give it a stir. We added a couple little lead collector pellets in there. And when it's ready, we'll pour it in a cone mold somewhere. Which we've got right there. Oh, right here. Pour it right there. All the lead will go to the bottom and we'll collect it. And we'll flash a little oil in the cone mold before we, we pour it in there. Oh, perfect. A little give oil. It a rub. Just give it a rub. Uh, yeah. yeah. And the, the hope here is that we get our two phases, our metallic phase as the lead collector and the slag phase without any matte phase. That's our hope. So we're going to heat up our cone mold there, get that nice and warm, dried out, and then we'll put it in this little sand bin and pour it. It's going to work out nice. This was our one part silica, one part concentrates, three parts soda ash, and it was too frothy. We don't like this one, so we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to do another test with some different flux and see how that goes.
metal that's probably the lead. Uh huh. Yeah, you see a few little bees of lead in there still. Yeah. It's too thick. Yeah, it's too thick. It's too thick. So yeah, a little bit too thick, but we're gonna try again. We'll see what happens here. And we're gonna add our next recipe is one part concentrates, one part silica, one part soda ash, and two parts borax. Correct. This time we have two parts borax. Living on the edge. He's living dangerously here. Got a full. I'm gonna add uh, again two pellets of uh, lead to yeah. collector. Okay. Here's the iron rod we were using, and it didn't get eaten up hardly at all. So I'm wondering if there might not be very few sulfides in there. There may be mostly oxides. So we'll find out on this test. If there's no mat layer, we'll be home free. There we go. Nice one. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see what we got there. So there's a little piece of our frill. how thick the slag was. There may be several beads in there because it was so thick. We'll get the hammer and we'll have a look. Here's our next recipe. A lot of lead loss. So here's our little bead, 1.59. And I started with four grams of lead, so we've lost a significant amount of lead. I think we chalked that up to the bad flux recipe in the foaming. Yeah. And we'll see about this new recipe here. I think it's about ready to pour, actually. Let's go take okay. a look. The best way to do that is to just cut, cut the gas. This is his first time pouring. Yeah, that's great. So uh, let that out and put it beside this one. Slowly, slowly. Yeah, ideally you would have tapped it to make sure it doesn't have anything attached to it. Now open it. This is the part that's a little bit uh, careful. Yep. On this side. Yep. You really got to keep it squeezed. Yep, that's good. With both hands. Your gloves are getting hot there. Your gloves are getting really hot. Yep, careful now. And turn it all the way over. You really got to get down low. Keep both hands on it if they're not too hot. You really got to use your muscle now. Clamp down on it. There you go. Yeah, all the way over, all the way over. That's great. Nice pour. Keep it, keep it all the way. In case there's beads, see there's still beads coming. That's good, that's good. Little bead left, that's the last one. Oh, there's some bigger beads up there still. But that was great. That was really nicely done. Cool? Yeah, simple. You just gotta get off this. Like yeah, and flip it over into here. It's been long enough now. Flip it into the clean one. Just flip it. Flip it upside yep. down, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Perfect. Yeah. And a glove, I guess you'll need. Oh, I'm trying to film and so it's it's in there somewhere. The lead's okay. The prill's in here. Where's the bottom? Yeah. All right, we found it. It's right there at the bottom. It looks nice, a little, little pyramid. This time it's much better. It's triangular, yeah. The other yeah. one was sort of circular, spherical. Okay, yeah. Mohammed, give that a whack and... Watch out. Uh-oh, is that it down there? Here's our nice little lead, lead prill. We'll go get it weighed. We added four grams. Hopefully this is a better recipe. Yeah, 3.5, that's not too bad. Closer to four. Yeah, you all, I, I've experienced, you've always, you always lose a little bit of lead. Yeah. Bismuth actually seems to be better. It doesn't, oh. You don't lose as much. Okay. But with lead, it's hard to get, if you can get within 10%, you're doing pretty good. 
We're working on a little cupellation furnace now. And that's a real nice showing of the oxide raindrops, I call them. But they're the oxides forming on the surface and then rolling off and being absorbed into the cupel. So we'll let that go until just the precious metals are left. And this is from our kind of our smelting blank test. So any precious metals we get will be uh, a bonus. Well, there's our little gold bead. This is going to be our first real smelting test of our concentrates. This is what we did the first sample the first day through the cone mill onto the shaker table. We're going to direct smelt the concentrates. We've panned the concentrates down to 100 grams and we've added 300 grams of a flux recipe that Daniel likes, which is one part silica, one part soda, and two parts borax. So we'll get that in the furnace and we'll give it a shot. How, how much lead are we gonna add? Uh, I like four grams. Four grams, okay. Yeah, yeah. then you end up with a prill that's, that's right around four grams. Uh, hopefully it's you now got gold in it. That's the idea. Yeah, and it's easier to cupel that way. Yeah, and that's the, that's. There's our, our little pucks. Lead pucks that come from the, uh, Hey, the, the metallurgist experts in Spain. Awesome. So, all right. it's pure lead. We'll get it mixed up and put it in the furnace. I already oiled that. Okay. And this is our first smelt from the first day. Shaker tables, cons, direct smelting test. Oh, nice pour. All right, guys, real quick, end of day four here. And some pretty exciting results, actually. We got our head samples back on our first couple sacks that we ran. <clears throat> Looks like we're averaging about seven grams per ton, which is a little less than we had hoped for, but uh, it's what we got. So we have some, some numbers about how much gold is actually in our samples. So seven grams per ton is about half a gram per sack. Now, I just resmelted our second shaker table sample. And what we found is you really need to remove the steel. The cone mill makes a lot of steel. And if you don't remove that with a magnet, it fouls up your smelt because you don't get hot enough to melt the steel and the iron. And so it's important that we remove the steel from the samples before they get smelted. But I ended up re-smelting the slag with 30 grams of additional collector metal from our second shaker table smelt. And we got the, the button in the Cupel oven right now, but it looks like it's gonna be a pretty good sized button. And I'm really excited to get the results because always, it always takes a little bit of time to figure out the system, but hopefully we figured out the system with the second run and uh, we can have some good results. And here in about five minutes, 10 minutes, hopefully we can figure out a percent recovery for our, for our mercury free, cyanide free, hammer mill, cone mill, shaker table run and hopefully it's gonna be pretty high. Here's that bead I was just mentioning, and it's pretty good size, a little bit silver in color, but uh, that's the biggest one we've seen all day. So we're pretty excited to get a weight on that one. And now with our head ore samples, we can do a percent recovery. This is our moment of truth. Not bad. What, 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 what is this? 0.78 grams yeah. from 108 kilograms. That's, pretty, that's good. pretty good. That's 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 seven and a half grams per ton. I mean, roughly with my yeah. quick math. This is our bismuth collector metal that I poured into the water 
and increase the surface area. And one thing I forgot to say earlier is we've added one gram of silver to this, 1.06 grams of silver to this, to try and help collect the gold. And so when we get our bead at the end, we're gonna have to subtract that 1.6 grams of silver out of our bead. But our hope is, we talked to somebody today that said, putting silver, a little bit of silver in there will help collect that gold better. So we're gonna try it. down there but those are what's gonna go around and collect our gold and silver it's working nice No beads. Wow, really nice pour. Really nice pour. Here's our prill all cleaned up. And surprisingly, it's quite soft. It's quite malleable. And my experience has been that the bismuth is quite brittle if it's mostly pure bismuth. But I'm thinking maybe that little addition of silver and any other precious metals we collected in here has made it not brittle, which is really, really nice. We don't have a real nice smooth top it's kind of gnarly on top but hopefully we got some good recovery here and we'll see what happens after we cupel it wow we added 32 grams and we ended up with 34.75 grams of metal yeah, here's our button. We're done cupelling. It's a pretty good size button. We got to take out our 1.06 grams of silver, I think is what it was. But there's an appreciable amount of gold there. All right, here's the moment of truth. Two wow. and a half. Wow. That means we got a gram and a half of gold on this one. Yeah, yeah. That's an incredible result. It, it actually aligns quite well with the good pour you did on sample two. It does. Yeah. Because we, 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 we did, did twice, twice, twice as much, as much and yeah. we got 0. 0.7, uh, 0. 0.78 grams, I think. Awesome. Good result. Yeah, we'll do some math here, figure out our recovery. Well, it's pretty interesting. We got that bead weighed, and when you take out the silver we use as a collector metal, and you adjust for the head grade of the ore, and we don't quite have those samples yet, but we have some samples on some other stuff that's very similar. We're going to be somewhere, again, in that 75 to 80%, 85% recovery. So I think that's just absolutely fantastic. Now, the other interesting thing about the concentrates and the slag from the smelting method is those aren't necessarily waste yet. So you can take that stuff, the stuff that you panned out, the slag, all that stuff, and you can put it right back through the system. Don't throw it away. Don't get rid of it. Uh, if there's any gold or any values in there, throw them back in and let them go through the system. And if they report to the number four tailings, their waste. If they report back to the concentrates, you can deal with them again. And you have another chance to get the gold out if you've lost any or have done anything wrong. So uh, another little tidbit for you on what to do with your slag and some additional concentrates that you may not be able to smell. So now we are processing one of the samples. So the protocol is just to process one sample at a time separately. One sample is around uh, 100 kg. It's not the same as they do here. They, they, they work per batch and it's around uh, 350 kg per batch for them. But now in the, in the case of uh, our testing, 
uh, we're just processing 100 kg at a time. For mercury uh, quantity that they add, so for each sample, so for each uh, 100 kg, they add uh, inside the weight band mill uh, 300 grams, 300 grams of mercury. And then when they got also the concentrate that they pan, they all, they all they add another 300 grams. So in total for each sample, it's 600 grams. So this is the uh, the first sample that we uh, that we grinded almost for five hours in the in the corn mill, and that's the grain size for him. That's actually fine enough. So this is the, the concentrate of the shaker table. You add some mercury on it and you just pan it for a few, let's say a minute and a half. This is the first one from the head sample one, and this is from the head sample two. And here are the results for our test and you can find the full report in the description below. I have a link to it down there, but I was really happy with the results. The gray brown bar at the bottom shows that the gold recovery using just the shaker table and direct smelting was about 74% versus the gold recovery using mercury was about 58%. And we recovered about 15% more gold using just gravity and smelting versus the local mercury methods. All right guys, well this has been an awesome trip. I really appreciate you coming along with me. If you wanna see more stuff like this, be sure to subscribe. I think we're gonna have some awesome results when that paper comes out and we have all of our data. I'm gonna put a link to it down in the description so you can check out the full results of our week here in Nuxhot, Mauritania. And I wanted to mention a huge thank you to Magma, our partner here in country, and Pact, who invited me here and has really been instrumental in getting all this going. And they do a lot of good work all over the world doing stuff like this. And uh, so check out their websites. I'll put a link to their websites in the description below as well. So check them out. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next video.